our spirit, our intensity, our toughness has to be displayed uh, every minute on the court. We have to keep doing what we've done the last couple of months of, of fighting together. Uh, we know how talented they are, how big they are. Uh, they have the best record for a reason. They got a lot of good players, and they're they are they are deep. But you only can play five at a time, and and we understand that. I love the fact that our guys are excited about it. Today was the first uh, first film session. Everybody was locked in on what we need to do on their personnel and their tendencies. And like I said last night, the the, the playoff series started last night for us. You got to lock in. You can't uh, can't celebrate last night's win and not focus on the next game. You guys, we focused on it last night. I thought the guys came in sharp today. Scotty, do you think, I mean, obviously the three center lineup kind of happened, right? It wasn't planned, but because you've had, what, five, six weeks of playing high level basketball, do you think that helps you guys going into a building like that where if Doc wants to go big, you can counter that? Yeah, I mean, our, our bigs are, they're the, they're the, I mean, they're the, the behind the scenes heroes for, on our team because they've all bought in um, playing the way we need to play and they've all bought into each other. And when you, when you have guys fighting for minutes, a lot of times you don't see the celebrations of each other's success, um, but I see uh, nothing but a lot of love and respect for each other, those three guys. And, and they cheer each other on and they care about each other and they want each other to do well. But when we play against a team like uh, Philadelphia, we're going to need, we're going to need all three centers to not necessarily use all the 18 fouls, but we need them to take their game and their strengths uh, against their players. And, and they all do a little bit different, uh, something a little bit different that we can, counter some of the things that they do well. DA. Hey, Scotty. Um, I know every team is different, but in terms of their length and their size and kind of their strengths inside, does Philly resemble a team like the Lakers at all? Um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're big. They're big. I mean, when you play against the Lakers, um, even when I played against them years ago, they were big. And you, you think about Showtime then, but they were big, tough uh, lineups that they would throw out. Philadelphia is no, no different. They can throw out from every spot, uh, a lot of length. And you got to counter that with some speed and quickness, and we have that. So, I mean, we want to play it's – not, it's not – it's not a secret. We want to play with pace and we want to play fast. And, and at times we want to even play faster. And, and we have that. We have, we have guards that can do that. Uh, so, but the, their length is definitely a, a problem and a concern, but we got to play. We got to, we got to play. If we want to combat that. We got to play with our quickness and like I tell the guys, you, it's not how big you are, it's how, it's how much fight you're going to have uh, and how big you are. And we got some guys that, that play bigger than their size. And also, without asking you to divulge strategies, um, with a couple of days of practice, can a team work on something like, for example, a zone defense? You might want to throw in a out of an ATO or something like that, you yeah, know? There's no question. We've, we've been working on it in the last couple of months and we don't, we don't do it. Sometimes I don't, we don't do it enough, but we do it enough where we know what we're doing. And definitely we're going to have to throw a lot of things at them. And indeed, indeed has seen every, every defense thrown at him. So we just want to keep throwing things at him. And but we're not just throwing it out there to see if it sticks. We want to be, we want to throw it out there with a game plan and, and we want every all five guys to be on that same page and on a string with one another. But we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to play well. Um, but I feel confident. I feel confident. I, I feel like I've said this um, within the group, and I've said it with our coaches. And 
we got the best backcourt in basketball. And when you have that, you have a chance every night. I know sometimes it, it took a little while to get it going. And sometimes we felt like we were fighting up uphill in a lot of different ways, but it wasn't because we have the best backcourt. It was because of a lot of things going on, but I think they're playing at a high level. Um, and it gives our, it gives our, our role players the ability to be stars in their roles. Chase. Hey, Scott, you mentioned the three centers and the 18 fouls and how that could work to your advantage. How do you balance that when uh, a center like Joel Embiid shoots 86% from the free throw line and just the catch 22 there? Yeah, I mean, when I, when I say 18 fouls, I just mean more like we don't have to worry about a guy getting foul trouble because we've got three really good centers that can, that can handle that. Um, fouling, fouling Embiid is, is a mistake. Uh, you don't want to defend him and foul. He's one of the best at, one of the league leaders at shot face. He's one of the best at ripping your arm, you know, ripping through your arms and getting those, uh, those silly fouls on you. And they get, they, he only does it when they're in the bonus. So it gives them two free throws. Then he's a great free throw shooter. Uh, certain guys in the league, fouling is not a mistake. But against Embiid, Fallon is a mistake. Not only it puts him on the line, it prevents us from getting out in transition and it helps them set their defense up. So we don't, we don't want to foul. We want to play physical without fouling. And um, going up against the Sixers, it's, it's kind of a uh, full circle for you. It's, it's where it all began for you in the NBA. Um, just uh, is there any significance there? And just kind of what does that franchise, that city mean to you, uh, given your career started there? No, it's a special place. It's a special place. I have a lot of love for that city. They gave me, uh, they gave me my first chance. Uh, Jimmy Lynham is uh, I'm lucky that he saw something that the other 22 teams at that time, I think there's only 23 teams, did not see. So I give him a, my career wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Jimmy Lynham and all my great teammates, Barkley, and rooming with him for a couple of months. Uh, it was it was very interesting, to say the least. Um, but a lot of respect for that team, that organization. Um, but when you play 48 minutes, it's about competing. And uh, the history that I have there um, is way behind uh, my, my thought process. We're going out there to compete, to, you know, to, to win the series and, and play, continue to play good basketball. Fred. Hey, Scott. Uh, their, their starting lineup has played a ridiculous amount of time together and is plus like 16 per 100 possessions. Uh, it's one of the best high volume lineups in the league. Does the success of their starting unit affect at all how you use your rotations in a seven game series? Um, there's gonna, yeah, we've all, all we, we think about matchups and, and, and adjustments that we can make, but you know, sometimes you don't want to make, I mean, not sometimes, I don't think you ever want to make uh, crazy, uh, changes um, when you don't have to, we have to, let's we'll see how the series is going. Everybody's, you know, it's zero, zero right now. And we fought a long ways to be in this position. We're not happy to be here. Um, we know that we earn the right to be here. And I don't believe that you can just, you know, you don't relax when you, when you get to the place you, you wanted to get to. We're, we're one of 16 teams that have a chance to win a championship. Um, is it, is it uh, the odds are against us? I don't know. I mean, it's happened before an eight, eight beat the number one seed. It's not like we're gonna do something that's never happened. Uh, and so, we're excited about it. Like I said, you have the, the best backcourt in basketball. You got a chance to win every night. And the way they're playing, the way that some of our, our other players have stepped up and, and some of our younger players. I mean, Rui's growing up in front of our eyes and it's all, this has taken place two years ago where we are today. So I'm proud of the fact that, that the guys work, you know, to put ourselves in this position. And, and just as a follow-up to that, you, you were kind of shuffling stuff around all year to find a starting lineup that, that worked. And the, the one with Neto that you've gone to for the last however many games of this year has, I mean, those five guys, when they've been on the floor together, have been super, super successful. Um, 
how, how did you land upon Neto as, as the guy who might be that linchpin? And what do you think it's been uh, over their time together that's allowed them to be as successful as they are? Well, I, I think you, you have to, from early on, from training camp on, I, I, I was, I've been impressed with Neto. Just, uh, just the spirit that he plays with, the competitiveness that he brings to the team. He just brings it like a really strong fiber. Uh, a winning fiber to your team that my job was to figure out how to get everybody in and again and ish uh, Russell and and Neto how do we get those guys on the court so it's taken some time and then some injuries have taken place so um, it's not like I can get credit or my staff can get credit for everything uh, with Neto but we've always wanted him to be on the floor because we felt that he just he has a he has a way to play with um, um, Brad and, and Russell, and then that's not always easy when you're playing playing alongside of two dynamic um, players that demand so much attention. And you got to understand your role, and you got to uh, embrace it and not get frustrated with it. But I thought he has done a great job with that, and we're good. I mean, even the Boston game. I talked to him the next the next uh, the next morning because I, I I didn't like the way he played and I don't I don't believe um, in in babying guys and you know I talked to him straight up I said man I don't uh, you didn't play well is everything all right is your leg all right he said coach I just know I just know that you know I just needed that game I said okay but we need you to play better uh, the next night which was last night but. I like the way that he bounced back. I can have those direct conversations with, with guys that have been in the league, that they understand that I'm not going at them in a, in a way that I'm trying to break them down. I'm going at them in a way that I need them to play better. And he responded in a big way. But I'm, I'm happy that he's had a great year, and, and I feel like he's going to continue to play this way. Chris? Hey, Scott, last night I noticed that you stuck with Davis. Did, was your thinking that he just needed to see the ball go through the hoop before this series with Philly? Yeah, I mean, there's no question. He's, uh, he's a big part of our team when he makes shots. And, uh, and the way he can make shots and, and is, makes us very difficult to guard with our speed and our ability to attack downhill uh, with our dynamic playmakers. Um, but I know, I know for me, being around enough basketball players, no matter what, you want to see the ball go through the net. And he's very prideful, and he's been shooting the ball well up until the last few games. And that Boston game, but like, like I said, it wasn't we – didn't, we did not lose that Boston game um, – because DB did not make a three. We lost the game because nobody played well other than Ish and myself included in that. In that. And, you know, Russell, I mean, I, it's funny. I saw Russell the other day, uh, the next day doing our COVID testing and I had him roll down his window. I just said, man, you played like dogs. You know what? I said, you need to play, you need to play better. And cause I didn't, I didn't, I knew it wasn't DB's fault. I mean, it was everybody's fault. And, but, I felt that he needed to see the ball go in there. That's why I played in those extra minutes in that, you know, the second half. Last question to Neil. Hey, Scott. For Ben Simmons, you know, obviously you guys have thrown Rui at him previously. In cases if Rui's off the floor and, you know, you guys are still playing that small ball lineup, how do you kind of negate his size? Well, you got, you got to compete no matter who you're guarding. No matter who's in front of you, you can. We can. We switch a lot of things with our with our lineups, and I always felt the more space you give him, uh, he's at an advantage. When you when you're playing against the bigger guys, obviously I played against bigger guys my entire life. If you're going to be able to negate their size, you got to get under. The, you got to get under their you know their handle, and you got to. You can't give them, you can't give them real estate. It's, it's there. It's, it's your, it's, 
as much yours as it's his and you know and he takes it if you give it to him so we're gonna have to guard him with multiple players and you know, he's a high level player and I always I've always felt you know funny that people complain that he doesn't shoot threes I mean he does so many good things and so many things well that you know it's it's kind of weird that when somebody that only can shoot threes, you don't complain about the things that they don't do well. But that guy fills up the stat sheet. He's a lot like uh, Russell where he fills the stat sheet up and he's an all-star, uh, all-NBA player. But just after all you guys have been through this year and the way you fought back from 17 and 32, what was what was that moment like when, when you realized you were going to be making the playoffs? Uh, I guess – a relief. I don't know. For me, Fred, it's like, all right, we accomplished that goal. Um, we're in. I sometimes, you know, I flip my mind to the next day. So uh, I haven't really kind of allowed myself to be, you know, celebrate. It's like, all right, we're in. Let's get prepared for, for uh, Philly. Um, you know, once you kind of figure out the game was kind of in hand, um, you know, I know we were celebrating, excited, it was some fun plays and Guys played well last night, but once I kind of seen that we were kind of in hand, my mind quickly kind of flipped to Philly. So I haven't really gotten a chance, um, but I think it's kind of like, you know, a, a life lesson uh, to anybody. Like, you know, you just keep pushing, keep pressing. Don't get too high. Don't get too low. low stay even keel. Um, and, uh, you know, your work will kind of make room for itself. So, uh, but other than that, I mean, for me, I've just kind of flipped the switch and be like, all right, let's get prepared. Howard. Hey, uh, you guys have not been used to having this much time off between games uh, over the past couple of months. What, what, if anything, does that change? And is that um, only a positive to have a little extra rest time or does the change in rhythm, can it affect you in a, a negative way? Yeah, that's a good question, Howard. Um, well, we do got some guys that's banged up, so I think it's good. You know, obviously we know B, getting him back to 100%. You can see him getting his step back. Um, you know, Russ played – he's been playing the whole season. And, and the way Russ plays, he plays uh, with so much will, so much heart, uh, throwing his body around. So, you know, obviously be good for him. Uh, some other guys that's just kind of banged up. Um, those are just the first two to kind of come to my mind. But um, you just kind of stay in the rhythm, stay in the – you know, we came in today, got some shots up. Uh, tomorrow we'll do the same thing. You just try to stay to kind of your same flow. And, um, you know, like you said, and get prepared uh, for Philly. But uh, I'm sure it's good for, for a lot of guys uh, that is kind of a little nicked up, uh, bruised up to, you know, get some rest, get some uh, extra treatment time to get prepared for uh, Sunday. And uh, looking ahead to playing Philadelphia, how, how in particular – with Embiid and Simmons, how, how do you guys approach facing the two of them and, and trying to slow them down? Yeah, they're a handful. Um, we know, we, we all know how good Ben is at 6'9", uh, being able to push the break. Uh, you know, he's each year, uh, he's not first, second, a third team defense. Uh, we know how special he is defensively. I've uh, been able to finish at the rim, his passing ability. Uh, we, we know what he brings to the table. Uh, and then Joe, uh, you know, Joe, Joe's been an MVP all year. Uh, we just seen that he was top three in that. So you got, man, if I'm not mistaken, I think Ben's top three in uh, defensive player of the year. So uh, you got your hands full. The top top five defensively um, and then offensively, you know, they got shooters all around, uh, playing around Joe. Uh, and when they get a chance to run, they're, they're pushing it uh, with Ben. So, um, and then their bench is playing well. Uh, Shake has been a handful for us uh, this year. Um, we know how talented Seth is, uh, Dwight, uh, you know, those guys, uh, you bring in George Hill, Maxie's been playing well down the stretch. So you got a lot of guys, got a lot of pieces. So uh, we got our hands full, but uh, uh, so, we're, you know, we're excited about the challenge um, um, and, and, and we know all the preparations got to go in uh, for, for the game on, on, on Sunday. Thank you. Yes, sir. Chase. Hey, Ish. Um, when Daniel Gafford got here, uh, Brad remarked that he had never played with a lob threat like him and that, you know, maybe there'd be an adjustment. 
but it seems like you know exactly where to throw the lob to Daniel Gafford. I'm wondering, did you have you played with anyone like him before? Is there anything that prepared you for playing with a guy like him? Yeah, you got to go all the way back, Chase. When I was in uh, college, so when I had college, I played with James Johnson. I played with Alfred Rubinito, uh, both of those guys, David Weaver. Uh, all three of those guys are lob threats. L.D. Williams and, and Coach Battle, Dino Gaudio. We had a great coaching staff, Pat Kelsey. He used to always teach us the nuances of throwing lobs. And then when I got to the NBA, uh, after, like, I want to say my 20th team, um, I went <laughs> – let me stop. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was in – uh, Philadelphia with Nerlens Noel and me and Nerlens, uh, we had a great synergy and just kind of throwing lobs and, and um, you know, trying to figure out when he's running the floor and different things like that. So playing with DG is, is, uh, is relatively easy. Um, he sets great screens. He runs the floor well. Um, so for me, uh, all I got to do is just draw two to me, throw it up. And sometimes they stay home with him and finish. So, uh, it's just a read. It's just navigating through the ball screens, pick and roll, and uh, just trying to find him in the right spot, make it easy for him. And uh, you, you mentioned uh, your 20th team. You've played both for the Sixers and against them. I know there are, uh, you know, it's not going to be a packed house, but just um, what is uh, playing in Philly like with those fans? Yeah, no, they, listen, I was there when we was trusting the process. And uh, as you know, uh, you know, they've came a long way. Uh, so I'm um, happy for the organization, uh, happy for the guys. Uh, I think Joe might be the only one that's still there. Uh, ben was there a little bit. Um, but, uh, you know, they're playing great basketball, playing really good basketball, number one in the East. So, uh, and, you know, the fans are, are loyal. Uh, and they want a winning team. Um, and so they can be harsh on you. Uh, but at the same time, they love you at the same time. So uh, they're going to bring the energy, no matter if it's, Five, ten thousand fans in there. It's gonna feel like it's it's a packed house in there. So uh, it's gonna be a challenge, obviously, for us uh, playing on the road. Um, they've worked for that number one seed, and, uh, and you know, so obviously, so it's gonna be a challenge. So we're we're excited about it. Fans are great there. I got nothing bad to say about it. Helen. Hey, Ish. Like you mentioned just now, you played on a handful of teams in the NBA, and even the roster here at. In the, you know, with the Wizards has changed since you since you joined. I guess you know in the past couple of weeks we've heard that the chemistry of the team has been working pretty well. What what about this group stands out to you? And you know, I guess what about the camaraderie of this team works so well? Yeah, Kelly. I, I think as the season kept going, uh, well, first and foremost, you go to back to the bases. Everything got kind of thrown together quick. Russ getting traded here, um, and, and then all of a sudden. Uh, shortened, you know, season, and then the preseason wasn't long. It was just a lot of stuff. Um, then with all the COVID protocols and different things like that, you, you really couldn't have any camaraderie with each other. Uh, you were kind of confined to your room. And then as, you know, obviously the world's kind of opened up a little bit more, shots have came out and different things like that. We've been able to uh, kind of, uh, you know, coexist with each other, hang out with each other a little bit more. Um, and like you said, it's been a lot of turnaround and, and Tommy's done a great job putting personalities that fit, that fit well together. And so I think all that uh, comes a long way and then trusting each other and being with each other. And we have been through a lot, uh, but I, I think just kind of once things start kind of opening up and you sitting in the training room, you're just kind of talking, uh, you know, and then you're going in the locker rooms, hanging out, then you're going on the road, spending time with each other and different things like that. That goes a long way to uh, a really good team. I think chemistry is any and everything. It's not just, you know, the talent on the floor. You got to have great chemistry off the floor. So when you do get on the floor, you, know, you can have that, you know, great synergy and uh, great energy amongst each other. And is that just personalities meshing well together? Or do you feel like the team has had to work on that throughout the year? No, I think it's personalities meshing together. Uh, uh, it's, it's funny how we all kind of click and, and work well together. We all obviously are perfect human beings. We all have our little things that we whine about and get mad about. But for the most part, uh, we balance each other out. Uh, and we've spent the time around each other uh, to get to know, you know, each other. So uh, you know, that goes a long way. You guys are playing the Sixers, and they, of course, have Joel Embiid, who plays your position. Um, just what stands out about the matchup uh, going into this uh, series? Um, he's a great player. Uh, I don't know if anybody's really slowed him down this year, but uh, – it's going to take a team effort no matter what.
Fred. So Robin, you mentioned the team effort. Uh, you guys, I mean, you guys are hardly the only team that has doubled Embiid in the past. On those, on those double teams, what does communication have to be like in order for, for them to work well? It's everything. It's everything. Everybody on the floor has to be cognizant of what's going on at all times. So when you're when you're guarding him in the post and, and you know that you guys are playing a specific scheme, who who is it on for in order for you guys to be a cohesive unit? Is it on you to be communicating when to double? Is it on the the person coming to double in order to let them know when when they're coming? I mean, there's di different. It's different with different schemes, but um, I, I really think the onus is on everybody. Everybody's got to be attentive. Everybody's got to be talking. Howard? I, uh, does it seem like it's been forever since you guys have had this much time between games? And uh, what, if any, difference does that make at all? It is, it is kind of interesting that two days feels like an eternity at this point. Um, I'm sure it'll make somewhat of a difference. The human body's got to be able to recuperate uh, a little more in two days than in one day, I would assume. I'm no, I'm no biologist, but I would assume. Thank you. Chase. Robin, uh, um, Scott Brooks mentioned how, you know, three centers in the rotation, that means 18 fouls. So one way to look at it is you can use your fouls, but he said that you know, also it, it kind of gives centers a, a situation where they don't have to worry about getting in foul trouble as much. What, what does that do to you knowing that, you know, there's, there's depth and, you know, if you get a bunch of fouls early, it's not as big of a deal. Maybe. Sure, man. Um, you can go out there, um, guard with confidence, be a little more physical, but uh, still, still defend with the mindset that he's somebody that likes to get to the free throw line. Neil? Hey, Robin, you've done different things with your hair. You know, you had the headband close up, then you went it all the way back. How have you felt that that has helped your hook shot this season? Uh, I, I'm not really controlling where the headband ends up uh, on my hair. It, it kind of goes back and forth from soccer player to Zippy the pinhead, so. <laughs> I'm 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 gen I'm genuinely not in control of it. It has a mind of its own, I think, just like my hair. Appreciate it, Robin. Zach. Uh, hey, Robin. I got to ask about your wardrobe choice last night. Um, first of all, what went into your decision to wear your Kagawa-san jersey into the arena last night? I think that was, that was an important game for us. Um, I. I I, somebody pointed out that we haven't lost when I wear a Japan kit. So I, 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 I'm trying to save it for the most, the most vital of games. So I figured I would pull it out. Um, that would give us some good mojo. So there was never any second guessing about whether Totoro might have been a better good luck charm for last night? I'm not, I'm not going to speak any I'm, – I'm not going to decry or, or demean Totoro in any sense. I don't think that would go well for me. Um, Totoro is always watching. Totoro is always, uh, Totoro is always giving those good vibes. But I think he would approve of the choice I made yesterday. Um, 